Welcome back to another episode of the Ghosted Podcast. Obviously, you know what this is. You're here. You're listening to this. You know what you're in, getting yourself into. A lot of talk about dating, relationships, hearing an interesting interview. And today, I get to interview someone that I have been so excited to talk to. We had to delay our interview for a week. I was so bummed. I have a good reason. We'll talk about that maybe months from now. Uh, but today, I have Jess Press with me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk with you. Yeah. And I want to give people a little overview of kind of where we're going today. And then I'll do your formal intro as well. So, you know, there obviously are a lot of people in the world that are into, you know, more alternative ways to be healthy or seek out wellness. And, you know, people have different priority levels on health and wellness, mentally, physically, spiritually, all the different ways you can be healthy and well. So, you know, what about when it comes to dating? We're going to talk about today, how you can communicate about that, how you can find someone you feel like is aligned with you in that, because that's a big value. And Jess is kind of the perfect person to talk about this with, uh, because she is a stand for the health and happiness of all humans, whatever that might look like. She says it always starts with you and you are proud, honored, and humbled to hold people's hand to help them become the greatest love of your life. And Jess has a Bachelor of Science degree in holistic health and wellness. She's a nutritionist, a lifestyle medicine coach, and a plant, plant medicine practitioner. In previous lives, which we're going to have to learn more about this, Jess was an educator, physical education, sex ed, health, grades 1 through 12 for over a decade. And so she's taught. She has so much experience with adults and children. So Jess, thank you for sharing your wisdom. I love it. Oh, I, sh I love it too. And I love what you've got going on, you know, creating space for people to connect and um, meet each other and learn and grow. This is great. Hi, I'm Abby Rosenblum, founder of the Social Modern Matchmaking and your host of Ghosted, a podcast about making dating easy and fun again so you can find your boo. Get it? We'll talk with dating experts, coaches, and real clients of mine and single people from around the world. Stick around for corny jokes, dating advice, and deep dives into the psychology behind finding love. Right. I mean, that's what this is all about. I mean, none of us know everything. That's just not possible. If you're listening and you do, like, I'd love to meet you because <laughs> you probably know a lot. Um, so I would bet that I always learn something with my guests. So I would bet you'll learn something today, too. So just first start, give us a little background or as much background as you need, because we have time of kind of what brought you into the space that you're in now. And, you know, then kind of give us a little bit more of an overview of what's like a day in your life and what you do. Okay, sure. So, you know, my kind of journey to and through wellness started at a, at a pretty young age where I was a very curious teenager. Um, you know, I always kind of questioned the norms and wanted to wanted to dive deeper into alternative topics like spirituality and plants as medicine. And um, because I grew up in a very kind of wellness oriented, athletically outdoor inclined family, those things were just a part of my upbringing. So it was very natural for me to kind of tend towards natural health and wellness and alternative kind of lifestyle. Um, so it was a real easy uh, fit for me to go into the schooling that I did with being, you know, holistic health and wellness. So, um, you know, from a very young age, I knew that one of my purposes on earth was to help others. It was a value that was really instilled at a young age and in any way I could. So, you know, as a young person, I was teaching kids aerobics and, um, you know, doing all sorts of of volunteer work as I was growing up. And then so that translated into me being a teacher where I really saw the value of instilling the values of wellness into our young people, right? Like giving people tools to grow, um, you know, that translated after a decade of teaching into my home care agency that I owned. It was a holistic home care. So then I was just helping the other end of the spectrum, kind of the aging population, stay in right relationship with ourselves, which really starts in wholeness and wellness. So I've always been, you know, an advocate for self-healing, for wellness, for finding the own answers to our well-being in our 
you know, in our own homes, in our kitchens and creating that for ourselves. So now I'm really passionate about helping other people build their toolbox for wellness and growth and thriving. You know, it changes um, how that looks changes a lot as I grow in my toolbox. So my newest tools are, um, you know, more in the quantum energetic field, uh, some quantum neurobiology tools, uh, things that are a little more esoteric. I call it the woo woo, but there is also a lot of <laughs> yeah. science in what I do as far as um, plant medicine, as uh, as oil applications, as medicine. So there, you know, there's a, a wide range of things that I like to offer people in basically building their own toolbox of wellness and growth for their life. Right. And feeling like you are well, healthy, feeling good is kind of a like just non-starter to dating. If you are feeling that way, you know, it's going to be really hard to meet that person, to attract a great person in who's also feeling really good. So maybe let's start. Can you kind of define wellness for yes. people who maybe are like, what does she mean by that? Yes. That's such a great question. You know, I think typically people feel like wellness is the absence of illness and that's really not the case. Um, I think also a lot of people think that normal is feeling like tired or injured or dealing with some pain or constantly taking medications. Those aren't kind of our normal states. So um, I think wellness is a combination of looking at your body, mind and spirit, how they all work together and really trying to implement habits and um, lifestyle choices that really enhance all of those areas, right? Like um, thinking about being the best version of yourself, your highest self, your most well self is really powerful, especially when you're looking to get into a relationship, because as, as many of you might know, what you are is what you attract, right? So if you are a certain level of energy and well-being, odds are that's the kind of people that you are going to be attracting into your life. And it sounds like too, I get from a lot of people, it's hard for them to believe that like, oh, okay, once I feel good about myself, I'm going to attract someone great in, but I've seen it. I'm sure you've probably seen it as well. Like, is there a, an example you have of someone who was able to attract something really good into their life? after, you know, working with you or just feeling better about themselves? Yes. Yeah. You know, um, I've had many clients have what we call peak experiences, which is either a super intense healing session or an aha moment or a plant medicine experience that really opened their perception to um, a deeper self-love. Um, it gives you a, access to a feeling that maybe you've never felt, but also a feeling that you probably want to build and create with another person too. Um, you know, I think it really does boil down to the most important relationship that we have is the relationship that we have to ourselves. That That is going to be like the foundation of how any other relationship works. So really putting and investing time into that, which is yourself, your well-being, I think is worth um, it's also investing in your future and in your partner. You know, I think another really beautiful thing that I've seen um, in examples of, of people aligning with wellness inside of relationship is when two people have a, a shared vision of what well-being looks like and can help support each other traveling down that path. Like scientifically, there's a higher success rate when you have a buddy in these things. But not only, it creates a really special bond when you are helping become and help helping your partner become a better version of themselves. Oh, totally. When you're challenging each other and growing together, you know, that's honestly one of the themes I find with people who come to me that they're pretty growth oriented. I mean, you got to think the people who are probably also coming to you, you know, they want help. They want to be better. Um, so, you know, we have stuff in common of the people we work <laughs> with, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. And just when you talk about plant medicine, what are you referring to? Because I think a lot of people might think, oh, is this ayahuasca? Is this, this what is a lot of different about? things? Yeah. That's <laughs> such a great question. Yes. My reference to plant medicine goes from very basic, like food, plants, medicine, all the way to kind of my therapeutic applications, herbs, essential oils, 
vitamins and minerals, plants. And then there's also the psychedelic medicines that I do work with, um, with specific clients. Um, you know, and that's a whole nother topic around, you know, self-growth, spiritual exploration, our access to um, new neural pathways, new belief systems, new realities, new paradigms. Uh, oftentimes a psychedelic plant medicine experience can really open your mind and your perception to other ways of thinking, being and feeling. Right. And I mean, I know nothing about this world, so I don't know if this is like an entirely different episode we do, but I'm sure people are kind of curious, you know, how do you think, you know, a single person wanting to find love, you know, how could some of these experiences, you know, kind of open up their mind and maybe realize, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think a big piece of plant medicine is that it allows something that in the therapeutic space we call ego dissolution where in essence, you lose all of your labels, your tags, your roles in life, so that you can really experience your true essence, which a lot of people uh, represent that as your soul, your spirit, your life force, right? So when you can really get in tune with that, you might be able to get more in alignment with who you really are, what your real purpose is, what it is that you truly want, right? There's also some people have reported um, in their peak experiences uh, with psychedelic use is new access to oneness and to a self-love that they've never experienced before. So if it's something that, you know, you struggle finding that that love in yourself, that is the key to loving others. Right. We, we can, I believe that's true. But um, unlocking that power and feeling that in new, more intense pure ways is a really beautiful way to kind of open your heart space to relationship and love. Right. And I see, well, I guess I should also probably just disclaimer asterisks that please do all these things safely. And, you know, we don't advise that you do this just on a whim. Yeah, no, (laughs) with a guided facilitator, an experienced uh, person should definitely assist you with those sort of explorations. It's right. Yes. Very important. Exactly. We cannot condone the use of legal drugs. We are just exactly. speaking. Exactly. And I, you know, my mom's a lawyer, which I don't know if I've ever mentioned on the podcast, but she's always getting on me to put little disclaimers in. Yes, that's <laughs> that's wise. Yeah, it is. Um, and I want to kind of go back to what you're saying about, you know, how things can kind of open up your mind to loving yourself, which is such an interesting idea, because I think one of the biggest obstacles I see with single people coming to me is that they say, oh, well, I just can't meet anyone good. Mm -hmm. Or every guy I go out with is horrible. Or every woman I meet, you know, isn't interested in me. So we're so quick to kind of blame all these people outside of us. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what are some steps that you have seen? It sounds like a lot of your work is kind of looking within and finding, you know, that acceptance of yourself. What are some things that you could recommend to single people to kind of find that love for yourself? Oh, I love this question, Abby. It's such a, such a lovely thing. So I believe that we really do create our own reality, right? So the first piece to self-love is really minding your thoughts, your words, your actions, because the culmination of those things really does create your reality. So if you are constantly saying, I can't find anyone. Guess what you're saying to the universe? that you can't find anyone. So I often find myself saying phrases like my soulmate is on his way or I am, I attract abundance and love into my world or I align with that, which matches me. Right. So there's a lot of like, it all starts kind of with our thoughts. So finding good things to think about, um, holding a vision for the person or the, the feelings that you want to have inside of relationship is a really easy practice. This could be like, I'm a big fan of making your wish list. If you can make a, if you could put an order into God or universe or whatever, however you associate that, which is more divine than yourself, what would you want? Lay it all out there. Put your order in, right? Even if we land with like 80% of our wish list, you're going to probably be pretty happy. So That is all about intention. Like, what is your intention? So setting intention with your actions around dating, around 
um, interacting with people around effort, around your own self-love and growth are all important steps. Um, I like doing self-love rituals. I can list a couple of my favorites. I Please I have do. a I love doing pre-date rituals. Like if I'm getting ready to go on a date, just taking a little extra time to um, feel beautiful, to adorn myself, to um, get a workout in or drink some extra water or whatever my body, mind and spirit might need to feel more full, more whole, more complete. Those things are a great way to raise your energy so that when you show up on a date, you are a complete whole person, right? Um, there's also, you know, some, some sweet rituals that you can do around, um, attracting your love, attracting love or your soulmate. Um, those are more like ceremonies and rituals that you can really get into. Um, but they're the simple things I would say are really, um, wellness and lifestyle oriented. Like, are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking care of yourself the way you would want to take care of someone else, the way you would want someone else to take care of you? That's all a frequency to kind of play in to attract that, which what you're looking for. And it can be almost a complete lifestyle shift. Like I noticed this with a lot of clients. I was talking to someone over the weekend and, you know, we were a few months into working together and I was like, you know what? Everything you've said the past like hour has just been negative. So I am going to be your positivity police and I'm going to come at you with positive compliments, you know, affirmations every day for the next week. And, you know, it sounds silly. She was like, oh yeah, right. That's not going to do anything for me. But, you know, if you're in that place where you're not feeling loved, you're not doing those things to make yourself feel special or, you know, building your lifestyle around like, okay, I appreciate myself. Right then yeah, someone else is not going to appreciate you either because you're not even doing it. Exactly. Right. There's so much value into that. That very message, like take care, taking care of yourself sets the stage for how you're going to be treated. Oh, totally. And I feel like I might just start this positivity police thing. I'm like, how do we <laughs> just kind of spread this where every day we have to just send a compliment? randomly to someone. We yes. <laughs> a really great question to keep positivity and energy up that I've been playing with is what are you celebrating right now? Because when oh, we're yeah. in a state of celebration, it's like joyous and you're um, like complimenting yourself because we're also in a culture that doesn't oftentimes allow for that bragging kind of like, this is what's good in my life. Right. So inviting that in, in other people is such a, a yummy way to get them to like glow up. That is so true. I was actually at a networking event last week and that was, you know, they break into small groups and that was one of the questions. What are you celebrating this year? Mm -hmm. And everyone talked more about that than they did about their business, about anything else that was a new prompt. So Jess, I'm curious, what are you celebrating right now? Oh gosh. Well, um, I'm, I'm, let's see, I have a few things like my son is coming home today after two weeks of being with my parents. So I'm kind of like celebrating that I get my kid back today. Oh, nice. Um, I'm celebrating the start of summer, a new season. There's a lot of shifts and changes happening right now, kind of um, in the cosmos, in the world. And I think it's, um, it's all, it's positive. I'm looking at it as it's positive. So mm -hmm. I'm celebrating the shifts of season right now. Ooh. Yeah. And How about what are you, some... Abby? What are you celebrating? Ooh, I am celebrating the ability to just travel and do whatever I want to be entirely honest. Um, my husband and I have so many trips coming up and that we've already gone on this year. And we're just like, you know what? We could work from anywhere. We can have nothing tying us down besides a dog named Pancake that all of our family and friends love to watch. So <laughs> that's great. Thank you for sharing that. That is definitely yeah. a reason to celebrate. Oh, totally. Yeah, this is the truly the summer of travel. So I'm excited about that. So I want to go back to something you said at the beginning that I was like, oh, we got to talk more about this. So you said you've been getting more into, you said more woo-woo stuff. And you mentioned quantum something and 
I don't even remember the word because it sounded out over my head. <laughs> so tell me more about that work that you do. Okay. So and I'm assuming it involved like energy. I know we've talked a little yeah. bit about this. Yes. Yes. So um, I'm being trained right now in quantum neurobiology, which is really all about having self-healing come very quickly through neuroplasticity training, right? So things that involve your eyes, your neurology. Um, I We use tools like breathing exercises and tapping exercises and somatic movements to uh, basically, you know, remove energy blocks, to process emotions, to uh, work with our traumas and triggers. So a big piece of the coaching that I do for people is called root cause analysis, where we really look at the bra the brain mind organ connection as it relates to emotion, lifestyle and relationships. Because as we know that lifestyle, emotions and relationships really rule our universe, right? Those Pretty things much. and something that a lot of people don't realize that it also rules our body and our body really keeps score. So when we can understand what organs are acting up in a certain way as what emotional trauma triggers are being triggered and then how to kind of unwind that, heal that, let go of some of that can really start helping our bodies heal in a, in a whole new way. So this is the art and science of self-healing that I'm super excited to be offering my coaching clients these days. Um, that's one part of the woo-woo. And then the other piece is um, more of like my self-study inside of what spirituality and connection to God looks like. You know, um, I know a lot of people come to me because they were raised in like a really religious context or they really never had much connection with source or spirit. And they want to kind of like find a way that works. So, you know, I have a, a, a variety of kind of religious backgrounds and affiliations. And I think that there's a beautiful way to create your own connection that really matters to you, that really resonates with you. And, um, and I help people try to, to find that, to find a, a new way of um, connecting with source, with God, with something bigger than themselves, to the oneness of all of us. So um, that's a little bit of the woo-woo that I really like to explore as well. Um, I'm reading a really amazing book and a part of a group right now that's called the Sophia Code. And it's all about um, women ascended masters that once walked the earth that have um, downloaded some transmissions and some uh, real wisdom that we get to learn from, from their lives on earth. So I'm in, I'm in a, in a group with a, a 20 other women kind of studying this text and these, uh, transmissions. And I get a lot out of the, those sorts of things as well. Oh my God. I have a million questions based on everything you just <laughs> said. <laughs> so, okay. Number one, um, when you were talking about how obviously relationships are really important and how, you know, it seems like when relationships are out of whack, like you said, it impacts your like physical body mentally, you know, all of those things, you know, how do you even begin to work with someone when they're like, maybe they're in a toxic relationship, maybe they're not seeking the right kind of relationship. You know, how do you go about that? I usually start with a symptom, whether it's an emotional symptom or something that's showing up in their body. Um, it's very easy. I have a lot of charts that guide me and a lot of information that I can gather all based on what organ is being affected, what the emotional triggers are. Um, I can take those bits of information and there's something called evolutionary conflict themes that relate to different parts of our body. So for example, we know that with most shoulder issues, the emotional kind of root of why things don't heal or keep re-injuring is the feeling of too much burden, too much on your shoulders, too much heaviness, right? So that's a pretty common evolutionary conflict theme. If someone suffers from like a knee injury, for example, usually that indicates that they are having a hard time stepping forward or kickstarting something, 
right? Or like having the movement they need in life. So there's these these really interesting themes that happen that really point me into that direction of what emotional triggers can be um, looked at and then worked on, upgraded. So a lot of it is kind of like upgrading our software, right? If we have a belief system that's running, that's kind of taking you out of joy, harmony, love, then we can rewire that, redefine that, or um, let go and heal that. And those are the kind of juicy pieces that really result in positive health outcomes or like positive results in your relationship, right? Wow. That is so interesting. I think obviously you and I have so much to talk about and we have hung out a couple times and it has always been so amazing. Um, seriously. I mean, we're just fangirling over each other in this episode, which is totally, <laughs> totally fine with me. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I was kind of curious to ask you more of a personal question. Um, you know, in your experience dating, you know, kind of being in tune with your wellness, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, all of it, you know, how do you approach dating in a way where you can find someone that aligns with you in that way? Um, because that obviously is a big value for you. It seems yeah. you tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, that's such a good question. You know, I think because, you know, a lot of my views aren't exactly mainstream or the kind of common thread, um, I think it's a little more difficult, but I'm also not attached to having uh, being with someone that thinks the exact way I do or that believes everything I do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not that attached to my own understanding of the world to not ha be open to being influenced by other people's understanding. So I think that um, while there are some things that are super important with aligning on, like, for example, I have this litmus test where if I can open your refrigerator and understand what's in there, then that's a good step. That's like a green flag. If there's things that I'm like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. Like that would be like a just basic <laughs> thing that I would probably be a, a mismatch, right? That's so, so interesting. Cause yeah, everyone has their different green and red flags. So like what, if you saw, or what have you seen in a fridge where you're like, I'm getting out of here? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it for sounds me, silly when I put it that way, but I love it. It's so funny. So for me, what I'm looking for are like um, organic things, lots of fruits and vegetables, you know, uh, things that represent that someone cooks a lot. What would be a red flag for me is like a ton of to-go boxes, no real ingredients and junk food and soda and booze. Those would be, I, I'd be like, oh, this probably, we probably don't have a, a lot to to talk about. <laughs> right. You're like, we might not have the most things in common. Right. And, you know, I hear a lot from people too. Like one of the bigger things I hear is someone who lives a healthy lifestyle yeah. is a big theme. And, you know, we're both in Colorado. So definitely I think a bigger thing here, but I feel like this whole idea of being healthy is, you know, worldwide. It's not just in Colorado. Yeah. Um, so, you know, finding someone, like you said, maybe it's looking at their fridge to see, or, you know, inviting them on a date that is active in some way and seeing yeah, how they yeah. react. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the most important piece of that is just really having open communication about your values. Like what's really important. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes we kind of dance around what we want or what we need in order to just kind of be with someone or to fit into a, a situation where it's, I feel like so much more valuable to just really be transparent and authentic and honest about what, what it is that you're looking for. What are the real, like, what are your top values, right? Because if you have a shared vision around values, a lot of the logistics can be worked out, you know, like having that common thread of like, this is how it's, we want it to feel or look or be inside a relationship. That's going to go a long way. Totally. And I feel like I say this every episode, but I'm happy to say it again, that values are seriously the biggest determiner of relationship success. You know, it's not finding someone who also likes to ski. That's great. Or someone who, you know, has similar interests, but you know, when it comes to values. And if you still don't know those after listening to 80 some episodes of the ghosted podcast, you're in trouble with me. <laughs> I'm like, I have a really good list of values that I put my, my clients through. So if you want that list, I'm happy to send it to you for your 
podcast guests. <laughs> oh yeah. Hopefully we can link that in the show notes maybe <laughs> so people can check that out. Um, and just how, you know, if people want to work with you, what's the, I guess, what does that look like and how can they get in touch with you? Oh, thank you. Well, there's, I have a few umbrellas. So um, my favorite way to work with people is a little bit more long-term with the coaching that I do. It's not um, a, a one size quick fix. Uh, habits take time and it takes support and consistency and accountability. And those are the things that I really provide with my lifestyle prescription coaching is um, kind of a hand holding towards your better wellness. You know, I have three and six month packages, year long coaching programs that I, you know, really love to hold people's hand into a whole nother level of well being and wellness through many different avenues body, mind, and spirit. Um, so there's that coaching piece. I also, you know, uh, just uh, can help people find products that support their wellness. I do um, some differential analysis on vitamins and supplements so that I can really find good supplements and the right programs for you. Also, finding ways to help people mitigate their prescription use through herbs and essential oils is another thing that I can do uh, with people. And then I have a couple programs that are being birthed kind of as we speak. One is called Teen Alchemy Academy. And this is a cool. kind of spirit school for teenagers, mostly gifted, empathic, and highly sensitive teenagers who are kind of struggling with the world right now. And understandably these tools that I so. Can... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And these are tools that I give teens that they can use for a lifetime in really being able to center themselves and tether to their knowing, to figure out their values, to uh, be self-expressed, to create more awareness in themselves as they move through their teen and early 20 years. And then I have a uh, program for women called the Wise Woman Wellness Program. And this is really all about self-inquiry and self-mastery inside of our own well-being. So I work with a lot of women who have kind of lost who they are. They're like, I don't even know my favorite color because we get in these roles of wife, mother, business person, all the things, the hats we wear, that sometimes we forget who we really are. So this is a course that's created for women who are wanting to either reinvent and redefine themselves or just to remember because somehow we forget who we really are. So this is a five week course that I built for uh, powerful wise women who are reinventing themselves. So, so, so and then so the last piece, ways. the last <laughs> piece are the sacred celebrations and um, those involve plant medicine, but they don't have to. Um, I also am a ceremonialist, so I can take a ordinary kind of event and make it super sacred and special by adding a lot of intention and meditation and care to it. So things like, you know, I've done baby showers. I've done, um, I've done um, divorce parties, engagement parties. We've done birthday celebrations. So that's another piece of, of the fun part of what I, what I do is, is sacred ceremony and celebration. And we should probably just tease that we have coming up in August, stay tuned, a very fun all day long event retreat that we are collaborating on with some other amazing people. So yes. stay tuned. This will come out way before then, but you're going to want to review and listen to this before you meet Jess. <laughs> yeah, that'll be so much fun. I've got so much cooking for that event as well. Super fun stuff. I can't wait. I believe August 13th. So if you're listening, mark your calendar. And you will definitely want to be there with us. It'll be a very intimate group and we hope to see you there. And Jess, I always like to end these episodes with some words of wisdom. Obviously that's what the whole episode was, but is there some small piece of advice you can give to single listeners for, you know, to give them a little optimism or positivity today that their person is out there? Yes. Yes. I think, um, kind of going back to you creating your own reality and finding um, if you aren't with the one, finding the one in many is a better way to get your vibration and your energetics to the level of what you're looking for. 
So if you're looking for, um, you know, a gorgeous, uh, playful woman in your life, find that in everyone, in anyone that you can meet, not the one, but in the many, right? So look for the pieces of who you're looking for in your community, in your friendships, in your relationships, and even in strangers, and you'll be closer to matching that inside of relationship. Oh, that is great advice. Thank you. So rewind that, listen to it 10 more times. You'll get it eventually. (laughs) <laughs> and Jess, thank you so much for being here. This was a blast recording with you, getting yes, to know you I, even better. Oh, and I yeah, can't wait no, to see you soon. So fun. So fun. Um, you, if anyone is interested in uh, scheduling, I do a 30 minute free consultation for people. If you want to learn yeah. more about specifics or, or, or what kind of route someone might want to take, you can go to justpress.co and schedule a free consultation from my website. Great. We'll put that in the show notes too, so people could just click and go. Thanks again.